Imagine you have decided that you are looking for a Bible translation that is the most reliable in your language. In particular, English. After searching and searching, you have some smart aleck turn to you and say, No translation of the scriptures could ever be inspired. You might just think this is a one-off, but you would be shocked to hear that this rhetoric permeates nearly all modern theological seminaries, and is even repeated by many professing Protestants. Where they are getting this weird philosophy from is a mystery, as they say it with such boldness and confidence that you would almost assume that they got it from the Word of God. Thankfully, however, there is no biblical basis for this belief in which we can know by turning to a Bible you can believe in, the King James Version. Now the question is, can a translation be inspired? Let's review a few verses and examples to defend having at least one inherent version of the scriptures. There are multiple instances within the New Testament where it translates the Old Testament, which would be from Greek to Hebrew. Examples being verses like Psalm 2 verse 7, where it reads, I will declare the decree the Lord hath said unto me, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. You can find these verses quoted in Acts 13 verse 33, Hebrews 1 verse 5, and Hebrews 5 verse 5. If we were to follow the logic that a translation could not be the word of God, then much of the Greek New Testament should have never been included in the first place. Answer me this. The conversation that would have taken place between Pharaoh, Aaron, and Moses in Exodus chapters 4 to 14, was that in Hebrew or Egyptian? Why would we assume that Pharaoh would have spoken in Hebrew as it reads in Acts 7 verse 22, and Moses was learned in all the wisdom of the Egyptians, and was mighty in words and in deeds? Did it ever occur to you that these conversations could have been had in ancient Egyptian? Another plain example can be found in Genesis 42 verse 23, where it reads, And they knew not that Joseph understood them, for he spake unto them by an interpreter. What about in Acts 22, where Paul preaches an entire sermon in Hebrew? where the book was written in Koine Greek. Don't believe me? The preceding verse before his speech begins is Acts 21 verse 40, where it says, And when he had given him license, Paul stood on the stairs and beckoned with the hand unto the people. And when there was a great silence, he spake unto them in the Hebrew tongue. Finally, don't forget that during the life and ministry of our Lord and Savior, he purportedly spoke Aramaic, not Hebrew or Greek. If the Bible had to have been in quotations, original languages only, then the originals were never inspired to begin with and the New Testament was dead on arrival. On the day of Pentecost, the apostles were given the sign gift of tongues, where it says in Acts 2 verse 6, Now when this noise was abroad, the multitude came together, and were confounded, because that every man heard them speak in his own language. From verses 9 to 11, you get about 16 different languages brought upon by the Holy Ghost. Do you really think that as the apostles were given utterance by the Spirit of God, that there were words and meanings lost in translation? As it is a cliche for new version advocates to say that this always happens when converting messages from one language to another. I don't think so. 
To think that the very first day the Holy Ghost moved into the believers of Christ caused them to speak in multiple discernible languages at once for all those who were there to hear and understand them makes a person believe that God's method of communication had grown far beyond quotations, original language onlyism, and shows the active involvement God has in communicating his words through translation. You can see where that puts the Alexandrian cult in a tough pickle when they fail to produce a Bible in any language, including Koine Greek. Here's looking at you, Nestles 29. In Isaiah 28 verse 11, it reads, For with stammering lips and another tongue will he speak to this people. This is a prophecy about Acts chapter 2, but much more than that, it is a prophecy about God's intentions to present his words in another language. This verse was then quoted in 1 Corinthians 14 verse 21, where instead of tongue, it reads tongues, singular to plural. Now you can call that a mistake, or you can see this as the Holy Spirit demonstrating that God has full intentions of sharing his word with as many people as possible. Continuing his pattern demonstrated with the day of Pentecost and showing that he did not relegate his scriptures to a dead language in the first century. The Bible says in 2 Timothy 3.16, All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. If God inspired his scriptures, it meant absolutely nothing if he didn't preserve them. And as it says in 1 Corinthians 14 verse 33, For God is not the author of confusion, but of peace as in all the churches of the saints. You would have to ignore passages like Romans 13 verse 1, which says, The powers that be are ordained of God, to negate the authorized version that was published under the authority of the Crown of England in order to use versions that come from corporations and committees that might as well come from Walt Disney, Mickey Mouse, and Darth Vader. More people now speak English than any other language in history, about 1.5 billion. So if there was a language that God could use to reach the most people, it would be this one, which would make sense to have his authoritative version of his scriptures in this language during these last days. Consider how Isaiah 34 verse 16 is an end times prophecy, and how it tells the nations of the world to seek ye out the book of the Lord and read. The question is, which book? The answer should be apparent. While many believers will point to the King James Version as their authority above themselves, New version advocates and quotations original language onlyists fail to give any standard of the scriptures and always tear down their own versions with their own whims and opinions of what a better translation should be. It's hard to convince someone to give up what they already have, in this case the KJV, if you have nothing to offer them. Quit your endless questions and stop ever learning and never coming to the knowledge of the truth and settle on a standard that has been tried and tested for over 400 years. As where the word of a king is, there is power.